Good morning guys, welcome back to another video. Today is something so exciting and so different and I cannot wait. So it is just before 9 in the morning and we're just about to head to the airport. I'm flying down to Sydney for the day to go to an injectables clinic and just get needles in and around my face and I cannot wait to take you guys with me. It is a very dreary winter stay here in Brisbane, but that's okay. I'll do a quick outfit check. So this is what I'm wearing. I'm wearing this like see-through blouse with like this silk cami underneath from Witchery, which I think I've worn before and I love it. And just these little tight black pants from H&M. My Chanel flat slingbacks, which I love. And I'm just gonna wear my Burberry coat with my little scarf. And I'm gonna take my Neverfull because it's so practical. And I'm gonna take my laptop and hopefully do some work at the airport. I just landed in Sydney. Oh, I can take this off now. I um, just landed in Sydney. The flight was good. I read my book and I just had some quick lunch in the lounge. And I'm just going to get in here back to the clinic. Okay, so I have just finished up. I'm so numb. I feel like I look like I've had a stroke. But that's okay. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> guys, I. <laughs> So my flight leaves in 30 minutes and the Uber is not yet here and it's like a 20 minute drive. So I'm probably gonna miss my flight, um, but I'll keep you updated. I get free wine on the flight, but I can't drink it because of my injectables. So I'm currently on hold with Qantas because I miss my flight. Um, I have this hand that's solid, it's ice, and I'm still numb, but I'm really hungry. So basically, Qantas won't, like I tried to just like swap my flights, which I usually can do because I'm a frequent flyer member with Qantas, um, but apparently for some reason I couldn't do that with this flight, so I've had to purchase another ticket, um, and she's sorting that out because it leaves like in 35 minutes. I just want to go home. <laughs> I just got home, had a shower, and I'm not gonna lie, I feel like a bag of smashed assholes. I just had two paracetamol. My lower face is just like aching, like along the bone. It's like pretty uncomfortable. I would say it's like probably like a three or a four out of 10. And I had like the most chattiest Uber and it like it hurts to speak basically, like it hurts to move my mouth. My lips are looking cute though. Um, my lips don't hurt at all. My, f oh. My cheeks hurt a little, but like slightly, but it's like, oh, this area here is so not feeling good. The results aren't straight away, so I'm going to check back in with you guys tomorrow and then probably um, in like six or seven days or so and show you what it's looking like. Because we've got a lot of fluid accumulation, we're probably swelling. I'm surprised that I haven't really bruised. I've got a couple of little blood spots from the um, Botox. 
But I will check in with you guys tomorrow, show you what it's looking like, tell you how I'm feeling, hopefully better than this. And I do have two meetings tomorrow at uni, so I'm really hoping that I can speak a little bit more comfortably and that I'm not bruised, because that would be embarrassing. I'd have to lie and say I got my, um, my wisdom teeth out or something. But yes, I'll give you guys the details of what I got and how much it costs, which shocked me a little bit. Place your guesses for how much you think it costs below. Hi guys, so it is currently Saturday afternoon. I <clears throat> had the injectables on Thursday, so I'm just doing a little bit of an update. I actually don't have any bruising, and every single time I think that I've had lip filler in the past, I've always had bruising. Uh, the swelling has gone down a little bit, but it's still quite tender. Nowhere near as bad as it was. When I move my lips, I can sort of feel, feel it. It's like a little bit, a bit of a, like a dull ache up here on my chin and down on my jaw up here on my chin ha, <laughs> up here on my cheek my chin is definitely the most sore i had so much product put into when i say my chin like not just my chin it's also like the side sort of like connecting the jaw to the chin this is all filled so i thought i would quickly talk about what i actually had done so i went to the men's clinic in sydney in paddington and i saw dr ryan shannon and I've never actually seen a doctor before for any injectables. I've always seen registered nurses and no one is saying one is better than the other. They're just different. So we ended up, my appointment was at one o'clock and then we spent about an hour just talking about what he recommends, like looking at my face for the first time, how it could be, you know, slightly enhanced and, you know, more symmetrical, more flattering. And he suggested a couple of things which I hadn't even considered. So one of those things was nasolabial folds, which are these sort of, these lines here that come down from the nose, like to the corner of the mouth. And because they're like a really tell, 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 tell sign, tell, tell, tell sign of aging. There's some sort of hollowness here. And so just a little bit of filler to fill it out so it's more even, uh, it gives you more of a youthful appearance. So I had a little tiny bit of filler popped in here. I was quite keen to have my cheeks done. Again, like nothing that looks like I've had work done. I'm wanting just really subtle enhancements. I don't consider myself to have naturally much of a hollowed out cheek. I'm pretty full faced. So he ended up putting, I cannot actually remember. I think, yeah, about a mil in both cheeks. So he did the apple of the cheek and then he also did the bone up here. And I didn't realize, because I never had cheek filler before, that they actually like inject down until they hit the bone and then inject on the bone. And it was a really unpleasant feeling. I could feel and hear, it was really loud, the needle scraping along the bone. So if that's something that you're not really comfortable with, keep that in mind. That was probably the most uncomfortable part. It didn't hurt, but it was hearing the needle scraping against my cheekbone. That was pretty, pretty bad. So I had a mill in each cheek. I think this side is a little bit more pronounced on the lateral side. We can see like a little bit of a curve over here. Um, this has always been my bad side. So I can't really see as much of a curve over this side. Uh, and I do kind of feel like the apple of the cheek here is maybe a little bit more full than this side. But again, could totally be swelling. And it's nothing that you can really notice. It's just me like staring at my face trying to find um, some asymmetry. I then had uh, about half a mil put into my lips. My main concern with my lips is I have really M-shaped lips, which I love. I love like a really defined cupid's bow, but my upper lips, the sides of them sort of droop. And so when I'm just relaxed, you can't really see my upper lip. So I'll show you. So just here, in an ideal world, we would be looking like this. With a lifted upper lip on the sides. And he said, without surgery, realistically, you can keep filling and keep filling and keep filling. And that's um, often a mistake that injectors will make is they'll just keep filling lips that just naturally will fold under. You can try a lip flip, which is what he suggested. Like we've got nothing to lose. A lip flip refers to disport. So Botox or anti-wrinkle to sort of in an ideal world, sort of lift it ever so slightly. Um, and so when you smile, that doesn't completely disappear under here. So that was a really, really tiny amount. I also had Disport Anti-Wrinkle put into my frown. I think, how much did I have? Maybe 40 units. And then in my forehead, I think I, I didn't have much. I think I had maybe like 20 units. 
and they were quite spicy actually. I have never really had pain with anti-wrinkle in my forehead and frown, but it hurt this time. And I also tried for the first time having crow's feet anti-wrinkle. So when I when you smile, these little wrinkles here. So again, preventative more than anything. I'm only 24. I don't have wrinkles, but I don't want wrinkles. And so yeah, putting on the side here, I do actually have a little bit of a bruise, I think, from just like a little punctured vessel, um, but it doesn't hurt. I then had Dysport anti-wrinkle put into my masseter, which is the muscle here. It's the really, really strong muscle that's like responsible for like biting down and clenching. And I clench really, really bad, especially when I'm sleeping. I clench, clench, clench. And so I feel like these muscles here are so, so strong on me. And when I just touch them, like they hurt because like they're really knotted and so i had so i had 60 units of anti-wrinkle in each masseter on each side i then had a lot of filler in my chin i think he put two mils of filler in my chin maybe three actually i think he might have done three basically he put a little bit of filler up here because i had like a little natural valley here so he put a little bit there he tried to make my chin put in a little bolus tried to make it more pointy more feminine and then because there was a bit of a hollow here between where my jaw comes to my chin he filled out this area a lot and especially this side is really quite tender i can feel the filler along uh, my the sort of edge of my mandible definitely more so on this side than this side and when i look down i'm worried that this side is more like more of a straight line it's got more filler and this still has like a little bit of a valley but again i'm like absolutely going through it with like a fine tooth comb like looking for asymmetry um is that everything i had yes that's everything i had so I ended up being there for hours and I was really impressed that he just really took his time with me and usually like you're in and then you're out. Like my, I've never had injectables take more than like 20 minutes. So it was really crazy and it was really relaxed. He was very good. He was very knowledgeable. But what I really loved and I'd never had that before. I've never even heard of this was he used a ultrasound to have a look and map my vasculature to prevent things like vascular occlusions. So where you uh, insert a needle into a vessel, if you were to inject there, we could have an occluded vessel, which is very bad. Went over my lips, went over my cheeks, looking for my vessels, which were quite deep and in all of the spots that they should be in. So it was very standard. So he knew where to avoid. I also had nitrous oxide gas, so happy gas that I was just huffing away at. He did give me a dental block because I requested one. Getting filler in my lips to me personally is just excruciating. It's, it's at the point where you, I can't really handle it. So I get nerve blocks and so they literally lift up your lip and go the nerves just up here that as asa anterior superior alveolar nerve i believe and then also pulling your lip going all the way down here to where it like it's no longer a lip anymore really like right here uh, into the mental nerve as well and it can be quite difficult to do nerve blocks. You need someone who's experienced in them. When I've previously had them done by Liz at Inject, she's very good. She always gets them on the first go. Uh, but he had a little bit of trouble. He had to try three times to get one lower and one upper. And, but it was quite painful. The nerve block is painful, but it's nowhere near as painful as the lip filler to me. Um, when he got this one, it was very bizarre because usually it's always just like, it's like you go to the dentist and you're numb all here. It like shot up to my eye and like my eye was numb and I kind of freaked out. I was like, my entire face is numb. Like he, he got into like, I don't know, probably higher up than was necessary. I and mean, he's like, oh yeah, no, it's fine. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so... After a lot of trying and like I'm quite like bruised off in my gums from where the nerve block was and like tasting the, ner the nerve block like the, the lignocaine was really gross. Um, we did the lip filler and he didn't do very much. He did a little bit on the upper side and tried to do it in a way that would encourage my the lateral sides of my upper lip to fold out and he just did a little bit on the side. He said I have a lovely lip shape naturally that it's like a heart shape and yeah that was everything so i knew traveling down to arguably the most well-known and respected aesthetic injectables clinic in australia would be expensive 
and I sort of estimated like, ah, oh, 2,000, uh, maybe 3,000. No, no. <laughs> so I believe the price, let me have a little quick little look on my phone. So they didn't charge for the nerve block, which I don't think they should, but I appreciate it because like it's a it's a bit more work for the injector. So altogether it was four thousand two hundred and sixty dollars. And that included a three hundred and fifty dollar uh consult, which is necessary for all new patients to have. Uh so more than more than four times what I would usually pay in Brisbane. So it was very, very, very expensive. Now the million dollar question, was it worth it? I wouldn't say yes, absolutely, but I also wouldn't say no. The doctor said to me that the filler that they use, the thick filler, which is for like chin and cheeks, is something called lift filler. And it can last up to two years. So it's like super thick and it's super durable. And because it's on the bone, it's like, it's there to stay. So you wouldn't go like Botox, you know, every three months and get this treatment done. You would ideally go every two years. So I think the chin filler and the cheek filler every two years, worth it. Yes, would do it again. I probably wouldn't return to the man's clinic for Disport, the anti-wrinkle in my frown forehead and crow's feet because I think that that is quite simple and you don't necessarily need to be paying a premium, you know, a doctor in Paddington in Sydney to do that. I think for chin, yes. Lips also, yes. And cheeks as well for me. They're the ones that are important and more difficult. But as for anti-wrinkle, no, see your local, you know, as long as they're registered and all is fine. I wouldn't splurge on anti-wrinkle, but I would splurge on good quality thick filler. Definitely will be getting anti-wrinkle in the meantime uh, at somewhere local in Brisbane, which usually is like between $100 and $150 for disport in the forehead. And I think at the man's clinic, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was hundreds it was much more expensive than that i'll insert the price here i think it was a really good experience because it's showing me like you know the best and it was really interesting the clinic was beautiful and you know there were all of the finishing touches that you would expect to be paying that price and for the name and so i really loved my experience there i did also have to pay for flights to go down there and ubers while i was there and then i did miss my flight and it was non-refundable. All right, so this is an update. It is six days since I had my injectables done. I'm actually at Hamilton Island, which will be the next vlog, but I thought I would update you with what my face looks like. From the side. I noticed the biggest difference with the, I guess, filler between the jaw and the chin. I do worry that it's not symmetrical and there's like a bit of a gap on this side, but. Happy with the lips, very happy with the lips. Pretty happy with the cheeks. Again, I'm worried that this side is a little bit more pronounced and chiseled than this side. Maybe it's just my face, I'm not sure. But the Botox is good, so I'll raise my eyebrows as high as I can. So that's pretty good. That's about as much movement as I wanted. And now I'll frown. I literally can't. Um, so this muscle here is paralyzed, which is exactly what I wanted and I also got crow's feet done for the first time so I will squint so before I had like lines there and like when I smile they're not there so that's great so overall worth it if you have a lot of disposable money but otherwise maybe not uh, overall satisfaction I would say probably an an seven to an eight out of 10. If you guys do like this kind of content, make sure you give a thumbs up, make sure you are subscribed and I will see you next week.